control rods are the accelerator and the brakes of the nuclear reactor. Below the 50-foot reactor lid are 1,661 uranium-filled fuel rods, which descend into the reactor's core. The splitting of the uranium atoms releases enormous heat from the fuel rods, which turns water into steam. The steam drives the giant turbine, which generates electricity. To control this power, 211 boron control rods are spread throughout the reactor's core. If they're raised, power accelerates. If they're taken out altogether, the engineers lose their ability to apply the brakes. Yet that is exactly what Dyatlov tells his men to do. Это верно, Анатолий Степанович. Это абсолютно верно. Если мы извлечем регулирующие стержни, управлять реактором нам после этого становится почти невозможно. Как же испытания не проводить из-за таких кретинов, как вы? Испытание будет проведено сегодня. А тебе я скажу. Если ты не хочешь или не можешь выполнять приказания, я могу избавить тебя от этой необходимости. Ты меня понял? Да. Пошел вон! Регу! Прими управление! Значит... Так, осторожнее. The men's revolt has failed. Trego Banakimov power up the reactor. Within five minutes, they've got power rising again. The Atlov has what he wants. Не удалось поднять мощность реактора до 160 мегаватт. Ладно, передай управление Каптунов. Вперед, вперед. Только не уходи, и постой с ним рядом. The control room staff have every reason to fall in line. To be a nuclear engineer is a prestigious and well-paid job. They and their families live in the company town of Pripyat. The shops are well stocked. There's a new school and amusement park. Nobody wanted to lose the job because losing the job would mean losing the flat in Pripyat and, 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 and going elsewhere to some, probably some ghastly outpost in Siberia. The fear of getting sacked was a reason why they didn't speak out more effectively when they realized that they were doing something that could be very dangerous. Eight minutes to one. Another alarm. No one outside the control room knows about the argument going on there. For workers like Sasha Yevchenko, it's just another ordinary night. There were no specific assignments for the shift. I'd already done one shift, and we all thought the reactor had been shut down. I thought the test had been done on the earlier shift. Outside the plant, the night is still. Three minutes past one. After the failed revolt, the control room is now calm too. The men have got the reactor's power to the level Deputy Chief Engineer Dyatlov wants it for the test. Anatoly Stepanch, we have now come to power in 200 megawatt. Very well. Let's start the test. But by the regulations, Начинать испытания я могу только при мощности в 700 мегаватт. Если вы хотите проводить испытания при уровне мощности в 200 мегаватт, я прошу вас занести это ваше распоряжение в оперативный журнал. Да будет вам известно, 
что как заместитель главного инженера я имею полномочия изменить параметры проведения испытаний. И я ими воспользуюсь. Продолжайте испытания. In the pump room, mechanic Valery Kadanchuk is visited by his friend, foreman Valery Perovichenko. Kadanchuk has less than 20 minutes to live. I thought you were not on duty today. I specially came early from Kiev. Well, what? Did you get your car? Well, at least I arranged it with the buyer. Okay, I congratulate you. As said, I'll forgive the Moscow 2140. Good morning, Jiguli. Okay. I think that maybe there will still be some women. Okay. Well, we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Next on Pervichenko's rounds is Sasha Yevchenko in the maintenance department. An innocent request will lead them back to the pump room near the reactor's core. The water shortage continues to set off alarms, but still none of these engineers believes a serious accident is possible. For the top man, Nikolai Fomin, it's simply inconceivable. Fomin had done a correspondence course in nuclear engineering, but he wasn't an expert in the field at all. He had risen mainly because of his standing as the party secretary. Unlike Dyatlov, who was aware that there were dangers in these reactors, Fermin believed everything he'd read, and so when the issue of safety arose, he'd say, well, the chances of an accident are completely remote, about as remote as you being hit by a meteorite. Even the safety-conscious Alexander Akimov, who does understand the technology, has officially estimated the chances of an accident at Chernobyl as one in 10 million per year. But Akimov and his colleagues do not know the reactor as well as they think. They are the victims of years of cover-up and negligence. Рабочими буднями стала для нас и одна из республиканских целевых программ энергокомплекс. From the 1960s, the expansion of nuclear power has been a key target of the communist regime. Nothing has been allowed to get in the way not even the KGB. These recently released KGB documents show the authorities ignored repeated warnings between 1979 and 86 that Chernobyl had serious design flaws. Chernobyl's director, Viktor Bokhanov, and his senior managers rushed to get reactor number four open early so that they and their party bosses could win substantial bonuses. Safety came second. Bukhanov, the director of the whole power station complex, was always at his wit's end to meet deadlines to build these reactors. For example, the roof of the reactors was meant to have been built with fireproof materials, but these fireproof materials didn't exist. The roof had to be put on, so he used combustible materials. Accidents were common and hushed up. The very test being done on this night should have been carried out before reactor number four was even opened. Now, at Chernobyl, all these chickens are coming home to roost. Something deadly serious is happening in the reactor's core that no one in the control room is aware of. The few boron control rods still in the reactor are only partially inserted at the top, so power is building into a hotspot at the bottom of the core where the sensors don't always detect it. The reactor is now an invisible ticking time bomb. Twelve minutes past one. The growing pressure inside Chernobyl's reactor number four is matched by the pressure within the man controlling the night's events. 
Deputy Chief Engineer Anatoly Dyatlov. Dyatlov remains determined to push through the safety test, despite the opposition in the control group. One reason may be power station politics. Dyatlov is in trouble with the local Communist Party for being rude to his workers. His boss, Nikolai Foman, is due for promotion. A successful test could help Dyatlov get Foman's job and remove him from the engineers on the shop floor. But Dyatlov also holds a darker, more personal secret. Back in the 1960s, he'd worked in Siberia, installing nuclear reactors into submarines. There was a nuclear accident. The investigation found that it happened as a result of Dyatlov's actions, though it was not shown to be his fault. Dyatlov was exposed to 200 rem, three lifetimes worth of radiation. Soon after the Siberian accident, Dyatlov's son died of leukemia, the most common disease children get from exposure to radiation. It is said the tragedy changed him, made him more driven, more willful. Tonight, his will is set against the very nuclear power that may have taken his child. <laughs>